Everyone, my name is Jeff St. Laurent, and this is the Tuesday Live Show. And in just a minute, I'm going to bring on a very special secret guest that I'm sure you've all been waiting for to help teach a lesson on today's topic, which is the very beginning stages of your coaching business. Before I get going, I do record all these Tuesday live shows and I put them on my university and my website, sellingcoaching.com. I help coaches transition to a full-time business. So I have tons of great resources and right on the homepage, you can start off by answering your name and email. And I've got a great uh, audio resource for you called Launching Your Coaching Business, The First Three Vital Steps. So you can go ahead and check that out. Also, if you want to check out, I have a great 14-day GoPro challenge that teaches you over 14 days how to become a professional, professional coach, get your message out to the world, and get you paid. I'm starting the next one next week for those of you that are watching this live. So if you want to check that out, visit GoProChallenge.com. You can learn a lot more and you can even register right there. But without any further ado, today we're talking about the beginning stages, the very beginning stages of your coaching business. And I'll share a little story because this weekend we got a little puppy. And so now I'd like to introduce to you my very special guest. And this is Kobe. Now, <laughs> this isn't a ploy to make you, make you go all, but he is kind of damn cute if I can say myself, right? So, but we got a puppy this weekend and this is day four with him. He's a little, literally he's four pounds, four pound Havanese. And um, those of you that have had children um, or a puppy, because there's similarities, especially in the very early stages, know of the nurturing that has to go on over that amount of time frame. Now, as much as I'd like to keep this little guy with me the whole show, I'm going to let him go to his mom, say bye. Bye. <laughs> he did pretty well. He's got another show later today, too. So <laughs> he's on a tight schedule. So. The whole point of me sharing that with you is because is obviously it's pretty cool because who doesn't love puppies? But the reason I'm also sharing that is because I was thinking about, you know, this live show topic today. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, what would be a great topic? And I always encourage people to kind of be in the moment with their topics when they're doing their shows and their education for their audience. And of course, we got him um, this last Friday night. So today's Tuesday. So Friday night. So all day Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday. So we're really into our like fourth day. Not even really. And um, those of you that ever had a puppy before, and if you haven't, I'd liken it to maybe a child, because <laughs> you're nurturing this thing, and you're in every little thing is brand new to them. And obviously, I'm going to make this parallel to our business, but it's I feel it's such a great parallel, and and it's going to help us with our coaching business in terms of the mindset, you know, because now this is a brand new puppy in the world, and literally he's in this transition of in 24 hours or the 12 hours before we got him, he came from Ohio. And literally, he was with his litter mates, he's with his mom, he's with his buddies, his friends. That's all he's known for the eight weeks of his life. Like, he's, he's eight weeks, just over eight weeks right now, just under four pounds. And literally, in that 12 hours before we got him, he was pulled away from his mom, from his, you know, his litter mates. I mean, talk about getting immersed into transition. You know, so we talk about this, you know, in, in transitions we go through as humans. You know, I, imagine that transition for him, right? And now he comes into us in a brand new place, in a brand new location, has no idea what anything is to begin with anyways, because he's only eight weeks old, right? And so this is the very beginning stages of his life. And everything is new to him. And everything that we do, in, in, as far as terms of touching, uh, um, in terms of sounds, in terms of um, routine, and all those pieces of it, feeding, um, potty schedule, everything is vital, vital, vital. And not only are the three of us, my son, my girlfriend, and myself, and our other, you know, we have a, another uh, little peekapoo, um, uh, an 11 pound, eight year old peekapoo named Lucy. And so everything that we do starts to form this little guy's future in terms of what his routine is and what his expectations are. And so it's very important that, um, and this is, I did all our research, right? And I'm doing the research in the, in the weeks prior when we're reading these things and watching the videos or training your puppy and things like that. And, and it's all about, you know, it's consistency. And how do you potty train? It's consistency. It's creating opportunities for reward, meaning you got to get him out into the lawn, into the backyard and, you know, follow him around and, and wait till he goes. Create opportunities where you can praise him. Pour on the praise when he goes to the bathroom, you know, so he ruins that. And then also the third thing is, is reinforcing negative behavior, making sure he knows where the boss and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, setting those boundaries. 
Now, the interesting thing about it, as much as we've watched videos, as much as we all talked about it prior to getting Kobe, our little dog, you know, little puppy, you know, when the, the night he comes, it's like everything, it's like, what the heck? You know, it's just like when, you're, when your baby comes home from the hospital, you know, you, when you've had a puppy, it's just like, holy crap, what? Like everything you've ever learned or read or done, it's just like, it's, it's different because it's real now. And, and it's just like, oh, what do we do? And it's just like, oh, what, what about this situation? You know, we, didn't, we read about this, but it didn't talk about this. And oh, what we, he's not eating, so what do we have to do? Okay, we got we to have a syringe with mixing baby fu- food with like little corn syrup so we can get simple, simple sugars into his bloodstream. And we're having to feed him like by a vial because he's not having hard food yet because he's still trust, stressing in this transition, right? These are the very early stages of what we're doing and in realizing that okay well it said let's kennel train and we put him in the kennel and when he whines and we're lying there and it's just like oh my god and it says don't get him for anything you know let him whine let him do that but how do you how do you actually follow through with that right so there's a lot of pieces to those beginning stages and i like to think about that you know for those of you that are in that those beginning stages of your coaching business and in, in, uh, you're very early on, like you're still thinking about it. Maybe you're going through a coaching school and you're getting certified. Maybe, who knows, maybe you've been out for a while. Maybe you haven't gone through a coaching school. Maybe you're just like, I want to do a coaching business. To the fact where maybe you've started to do your website. Maybe you've started to, you know, figure out, you know, you know your niche. You know, you're in that phase of just starting off. Maybe you've been doing it for a couple of years, um, but really haven't made much progress at all. And so maybe you're still in the nurturing phase. And so what I'm sharing with you is, is that to help with that mindset, I wanted to show you this little puppy. And right now, that's our world. Like, obviously, we, you know, we have a schedule. I've got to do my work. I've got, to, I've got to show up for my clients and do my business and these things. That doesn't stop. But so we're having to coordinate and we're having to figure out what we've got to do. But that's our whole world. When this show is done, guess what I'm doing? I'm, I'm heading downstairs. I get to have a little lunch before my next client. And, uh, okay, do I need to help out? Do we need to feed? Do we need to take them out? Like, it's a priority to be consistent with that. So that's the same thing with your business. I want your business to liken, especially in the early stages, to a puppy, you know, and, and realizing, like, that's on your mind 24-7. That doesn't stop. That's your priority, and that takes up all of your energy and your space. Not all of it, but the majority of it. And the reason why it's got to do that, and even if you're doing this part-time, you know, it doesn't matter. If you want to earn um, income from a coaching business, I'm not saying it's full time, meaning 40 hours a week. We put in 40 hours a week into this guy. You're like, well, no, like there's times where he does this thing and he naps and, and you know, we do our own thing, but we're setting boundaries or setting a schedule with him. And it's no different for your business, right? Right. You've got to set boundaries for yourself. You've got to set schedules for yourself, right? You've got to be on this full time. And you've also got to realize that you've got to coordinate with the other people in your household. If you have anyone else in your household, same thing. We have to coordinate in terms of our schedules and being on the same page with things. You've got to coordinate with those people in terms of your schedule. When you're going to be in your office, what are the expectations? When I'm in my office and I shut the door, don't come in my office. I'm working, kids, spouses, you know, any family members you might live with, friends, depends on where you're at. You've got to set those boundaries and expectations so you can be successful with your training and your application of what you're doing. Also recognize all the studying in the world doesn't matter, right? And that, it, does, it does matter. It some plays a role, but when you're actually doing your business for real, everything you've ever read about, all the videos you've watched, all my Selling Coaching Tuesday live shows you've watched, you know, or the courses you've taken or things like that, a lot of it tends to go out the window right away because you, you're book smart and you're logically smart and you logically know what to do because Jeff says this or so-and-so says this or I read this or, or my best friend, other coach is doing this and they've been successful with it. And now it's time for you to actually jump in the water and swim, so to speak. And it's just like, oh my God, it's, it's very different. And there's a lot of scenarios. And just like I said, I was book smart. We, we read, we watched videos on the puppy first night. It's like, oh my God, what do we do? It's the same thing. But what you've got to do is, is here's the deal. Like even um, with my son last night, like we're taking turns, you know, who's, who's staying downstairs where the kennel is because he's not, he, he can't hold his bladder until he's like 15 weeks. He's eight, eight weeks right now. And so literally for the next three, four weeks, you know, it's like when, when he wakes up, he's going to go to the bathroom, whether we take him outside or not. And we want to be really good about potty training him outside so he doesn't go in the house. And so anytime he wakes up, you know, and he, and he starts going every three or four hours or so, we want, especially through the middle of the night, we want to be there, take him outside. He's already starting to go to the door even after four days, right? So we're seeing results of it, but it's only because we've been consistent with it. But also, we can't expect that all of a sudden, you know, we're going to do something and let him alone and that he's not going to piss in the house, right? And so same thing with yourself. It's like you could be consistent for three or four days and you can start to see some results, right? You could go down and do a, a live broadcast like this. You know, you could get on and send, start sending some emails or start reaching out to some people and letting people know you started your business. 
maybe you get your first client in your first week. But it would be foolish of you to expect that, well, I'm just going to keep doing this and all of a sudden I'm just going to start making all this money. It'd be foolish of you, right? It's just like us, us just because we're seeing some results and he's going to the door. It would be foolish of us to think that, oh, oh he's body trained already. No, he's not. And so you've got to have this, this very nurturing, um, coddling, not coddling, man, that's the wrong word, um, consistent, stern, a, a discipline. These are better words I'm thinking right now, right? So discipline nature about what you're doing in your business. And when I say that the beginning stages, I like to think of the beginning stages of your business to be the first 18 to 24 months. And you're thinking, oh my God, 18 to 24 months? What are you kidding me? After doing this for two years, I'm, I'm gonna get this thing going, baby. It's like, well, yeah, you're gonna get this thing going. But you've got to be consistent with that time frame. If you want to really start you know, seeing some real long consistent results, that's the time frame you need to start working your systems week in, week out flawlessly. When I say flawlessly, it's not like perfectionistly, but it means like consistently. It's not like, oh, you work three or four days and then you take five or six days off or a week off or, you, you know, oh, I've been stressed or I wasn't feeling good, or we got a new puppy, and so two weeks later, you come back to your business. Like, I'm not saying I got a new puppy, and then you guys all, you don't see my Tuesday live show, you don't see my emails, I drop off the face of the planet, and next thing you know, I'm like, oh, I better start doing my business again. No, like, the show goes on, and I've gotta figure it out. And if no one else is here, if my girlfriend was working, and my son's gone, guess what? I gotta put the little guy in a kennel, and he, maybe he's gonna whine his head off for, for an hour or whatever while I'm doing my show, and that's what I've gotta do, I've gotta figure it out. And so it's the same, you've got to figure things out in your business, but you can't compromise. You can't compromise what you're doing in your business because of other things in your world. You know, and I recognize there are things that can consume you and you're going through a divorce or you're moving or, you know, major transitions, you know, or, or you know, someone in the family's sick, you know, and things like that. You know, we're, there's a lot going on, but you've got to stay disciplined. And if you want consistent income in your business, You've got to have the mindset of that nurturing phase being that 18 to 24 months of the consistency. Because here's the thing, like I said just a few minutes ago, anyone can go out and launch their business and, and you know, do a live and start promoting stuff. And, and then I, I see this all the time with my clients. You know, they'll start doing something and next thing you know, it's not, not everybody, but it's like, you know, five out of 10 people. Next thing you know, they're like, guess what? I got a client. It's like, oh my God. And, it, and it's like, great, you know, you did something. But now it might, it might be another month or two before you get another client. And maybe you hit another one right out of the gates again, you know, in two weeks later. Great. But most of the time you'll, you'll get paid and then there's a gap between when you get paid next. How long that gap is, no one can predict that. It just depends on the people that you have exposure to, the, the, you know, the visibility and, and the fans that you have starting off out of the gates. And everyone's in a different position there. But what the difference between someone who's been doing it over a longer period of time getting paid and the person who's doing it in that nurturing phase of that 18 to 24 months and getting paid is a person in that 18 to 24 months is getting paid inconsistently. Meaning you get paid and then there's a gap and then you get paid and then there's a gap. Whereas is when you're doing it for a longer period of time, two plus years consistently, you're getting paid more consistently. So you get paid and then a small bit of time goes by, you get paid. You get paid, you get paid, right? And even if the, the level of income every month isn't at where you want it, needed, it, hoped or, or expected it to be, it's, it's more of a consistent flatline effect, you know, just little bits like this versus like, get paid, nothing. Get paid, nothing. You know, that's what we're going for. And you need to have that nurturing phase. And, and what I wanna show you is that mindset is, is that every waking hour that we're doing this with our new puppy, Kobe, is it's like, we gotta get him outside. It's putting food in his belly and getting his ass outside so he can poop and pee. And when he poops and pees, we praise the crap out of him, right? So what is it with you? It's like, we gotta put food in your belly. I mean, we, we've gotta get you out there. We gotta start you marketing, right? And then when you do that, we've, we've gotta get you outdoors and we've gotta get you pottying, right? So we've gotta do those things. We do them consistently. And those two main things in your business is getting you out there, you know, getting your message spoken to the world and then following up with those people. And all those other pieces and your website and your email list and, and uh, you know, social media stuff and all that other stuff that's very important. You can start doing that stuff in parallel. But the biggest piece of that is making sure that you're getting out and you know, speaking your message in front of people and then following up with them. That's the core foundation of your business all the time. And if anything else suffers, if anything else suffers, it's everything else but that. So in other words, if, you know, obviously once you have clients, that's the third piece that we don't want to suffer. We don't just 
neglect our clients, right? So, but right now, if you're starting off, you don't have any clients, right? Or maybe you've got a couple barter, or maybe you've got one, you know, you've got one out of the gates, et cetera. But other than servicing those, those people, it's getting your message out there and then servicing those clients. That's why if you've seen what I've talked about, my, four, my GoPro 14 day challenge, that's what I focus on in those 14 days is helping people get out to the world, you know, craft their message, know their offering, market themselves, teach them how to market themselves, and then, and then ideally follow up with those people to get paid. We focus on those fundamental mechanics that te- walks you through a strict process, the process that I use, the process that I teach my mentor, to my mentor coaching clients and my group mentor coaching clients so that they can have a rinse and repeat system that they do. Just like I'm teaching Kobe, we're trying to teach a, a schedule, a rinse and repeat system so it makes our life easier. Right now it's not easy, but it's gonna be easier because we're training him what we want. You're doing a rinse and repeat if you gotta know that process, is you've gotta set, set yourself on a, a disciplined process and a schedule so as you can train yourself to be disciplined so you can make it easier on yourself down the road so you can get those consistent results. So. If this is something, the GoPro challenge, if that's something that you're interested in taking a look at, I'm actually running the next one um, this coming Tuesday. So if you're watching this live on June 16th, if you're watching the recording, simply visit goprochallenge.com to find out when the next one is. But if you're interested in doing this next one, visit goprochallenge.com and you can learn more and register right there. If you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to me. My contact information is right uh, when you go to that website, goprochallenge.com.